Okay, here's Algebra 1, Week 28, Day 5. So if you have watched the help videos that are posted, you have already seen that there are three different ways that you can write a quadratic function. And here's the first one. It's the standard form, ax squared plus bx plus c. That's when we did quadratic equations, that was our standard form. And now as a function, it's y equals that. The vertex form, which we have used for graphing these last couple days, um, y equals a times the quantity x minus h quantity squared plus k. The factored form is y equals, in parentheses, x minus something and then x minus something else. It doesn't have to be an m or an n, but that those are commonly used when we talk about the factored form. So let's take a look at some examples and talk about which forms are best for what information we need. So the standard form again, y equals ax squared plus bx plus c, here's an example with actual numbers in there. This form is really best for finding y-intercepts. Because remember, when we find y-intercepts, we let x equal 0. So if I let x equal 0 in this equation, this term is going to be 0, this term is going to be 0, and all that's left is this number. So when you have an equation that's written in this form and you're asked for the y-intercept, all you got to do is write down this number. So the y-intercept for this one is 0, 8. That's not the case for these other two forms. So if you um, want to find the y-intercept, this is the best form to do that. Now look at the vertex form. That's really going to give us the most information. So here's an example. We've been looking at equations like this, we know that this means it's a right shift of four units, an up shift of seven units, and a vertical stretch with a factor of two. And um, so this type of form is best for finding the vertex, and we know the vertex for this one is going to be positive four, positive seven. There's that right shift and the up shift. Then our axis of symmetry has to go through the x coordinate here. It has to go through that point, and it's got a vertical line through this value, so you can pick out the axis of symmetry very easily. And then the last one is the POC. Our POC, in this case, since there's a 2 in front, we need to take 2 times our standard POC of 1, 3, 5, and that is going to give us 2, 6, 10. And then the last form, the factored form, is best for finding zeros. So I have an example here. Remember that when we find zeros, we let y equal 0, because zeros are also called x-intercepts. So if I take this and put 0 in for y, I get a quadratic equation that we have solved many like this before. You set each factor equal to 0. And then you solve them, and we get x equals 5 or x equals negative 2. So the numbers 5 and negative 2 are the x-intercepts, which are also called zeros. Now, if you're given one of these forms, you need to be able to turn it into the other forms because if you get this and you're asked to graph, it would be better if you had it in this format. Or if you're looking for zeros and you've got it in this format, you're going to have to change it to this format to figure that out. So on your worksheet for day five, that's what you're doing. So I'm going to go through some examples and show how to algebraically do that. You already have all the skills that you need. Um, let's just put them into practice and look at a few examples. First of all, write the following quadratic functions in standard form. That just means multiply everything out and you will, you'll be done. So in this case, if I use FOIL, I get x squared minus 7x 
plus 4x minus 28. So when I combine those two middle terms, I get x squared minus 3x minus 28. And we're done. Over for the second one, I've got to do a little extra work because this needs to be squared, and that turns into x squared minus 2x plus 1. You can either use that little shortcut that we learned, or you could just write it down twice and use FOIL. So when I put the rest of it in here, now I need to do distributive, and I get y equals 3x squared minus 6x plus 3. Now, don't multiply the 3 times this 2 because it's not in the parentheses. It just tags along at the end, and then we're able to combine those last two numbers and get plus 5. So these two are now in standard form. So we started with factored form and vertex form, and we changed them into standard form. Okay, let's look at the next type. Now we're going to write these in vertex form. So remember that the vertex form looks like y equals a x minus h quantity squared plus k. So if you look at this one, and then you look at this, we know that this has been shifted up 8 units. So our new vertex is 0, 0,8. We know that from the work that we've already been doing this week. So the vertex here is 0, 0,8, which means I could write this as y equals x minus 0 quantity squared plus 8 because that is where the vertex 0, 8 comes from. And it doesn't matter if you write x plus 0 or x minus 0. But this would be the vertex form for this guy. Now, if you look over here, remember that this minus 3 inside the parentheses was a right shift of 3, which means the vertex for that one would be 3, 0. So we could rewrite this as x minus 3 quantity squared and then just write plus 0. Because I need a number here and here, just like I need a number here and here, and our vertex plays into those two numbers. So those are the easy ones. You don't really have to do a lot of work, but most of them are much more complicated. So let's look at the process. So this process you already know because when we did quadratic equations, I told you that solving by completing the square was something I would never choose to do unless I had to, but I also told you that you would see it again. So this is the day that you see it again. So this is the process. Uh, remember what we're looking for. I'm going to write it here again. Y equals a x minus h quantity squared plus k. So I need to have a quantity squared. And we should remember from when we did quadratics that in order to get a quantity squared, I need to complete the square. So this is what's going to happen. I have y equals x squared plus 6x plus 2. But I don't want that 2 there. I want to put a special number there so that I can get a squared binomial. So the easiest way to do that is to just scoot that plus 2 over here and put in a plus blank. That should look familiar to you. And while we're at it, why don't let's let's group this all together so that um, it looks like a trinomial. Okay, so now here's the deal. When I take half of this number and square it, because that's the process for completing the square, I will write it down here. We take half of that number 6, which is 3, we square it, and that's what goes in that blank. Okay, so, but now think about it, because I've got a teeter-totter here. On the left side, I've got y, because here's my equal sign. On the right side, I've got x squared plus 6x plus 9 plus 2. Now, I'm going to erase this for a second so that you can see what's going on here. So right now, this is the original problem, and it's balanced. 
Here's the Y. Here's the other stuff. Now, if you want to add a 9 here to the right side, you have either got to add the 9 here and then add the 9 here to keep it balanced. That's what we did when we were solving quadratic equations. But notice we don't want anything with the Y. So instead of adding 9 here, why don't we add the 9 and then subtract the 9 and stay on the same side? So I'm going to erase this guy, and I'm going to go to the other side and subtract the 9. Because then if you look at this side and clean it up, the plus 9 and minus 9 will cancel each other, and you have x squared plus 6x plus 2, which is what we have up here. So here's the bottom line. When you add a number to complete your square, we are going to actually subtract that same thing by staying on the same side. Okay, let's keep going. If I factor this using backwards FOIL or remembering from completing the square problems before that the half of number is the number that always goes here. So if this was a plus 6, the half of number was plus 3. And then let's write down what we've got left. Um, I've got a positive 2 minus 9. That's a negative 7. And I'm done. So from this, my vertex is negative 3, negative 7. Okay, so quick review. We're going to take this equation. We're going to slide this over, put in our plus blank and minus blank. We're going to complete the square. We're going to factor it and we'll be done. Okay, let's do another one that is pretty much the same type of problem. If you look at this one, we want to complete the square, so we're going to have to scoot this guy over, and it looks like y equals x squared minus 8x. We're going to scoot the 5 over and put in a plus blank minus blank. And let's also put in parentheses. Okay, we need to complete the square. So we take half of this and square it. Well, half of this is negative 4. And when you square anything, it's always positive. So 4 squared is going to be a 16. Now, because I need to keep my equation balanced, if I add 16, I'm going to need to subtract 16 in order to not affect my original problem. Okay, now we're just going to factor. When I factor this, I get x minus 4 quantity squared. And then when I combine a negative 5 and a negative 16, I get a negative 21. These are actually easier than when we had to solve the whole equation by completing the square, because you're not taking square roots or dealing with radicals or anything. But when you get it in this form, it's super easy to then pick out the vertex and the pattern of change. Okay, let's look at the next one. This one is in the factored form. So I, before I can complete the square, I'm going to have to get that in standard form. So I'm going to have to do FOIL first. So y equals x squared plus 6x minus 2x minus 12. Okay, so y equals x squared plus 4x minus 12. Now we can do that completing the square process again. So I am going to put in my plus blank. I'm going to scoot that 12 over and put in minus blank. So here's the plus blank minus blank, and then I, I put the parentheses around my trinomial. So now half of 4 is 2, and 2 squared is 4. I'm going to add 4 and subtract 4. Almost done. Factor and get x plus 2 quantity squared. Remember that this is the half of number for this, and then minus 16. So my vertex would be negative 2 comma negative 16. Okay, let's do one more problem, and this is probably the hardest one. So here's the problem. 
y equals 3x squared plus 12x minus 3. And the reason this is tough is because there's a number there. Hopefully you remember that when there's a number in front of the x squared, we cannot complete the square. So how are we going to get rid of this? Well, when we were doing these before, I told you just, just get rid of it by dividing it. Divide by 3, divide by 3, divide by 3, divide by 3. Uh-oh. Look what happens here. If it were an equation like this, 3x squared plus 12x minus 3 equals 0, then dividing by 3 is awesome because 0 divided by 3 is still 0. And so I could write x squared plus 4x minus 1 equals 0 and just keep going. This is a problem here because I don't want a y over 3. What am I going to do with that? Okay, so let's take a look at another option. I'm going to start this out the same way by saying 3x squared plus 12x plus blank Scoot the 3 over, minus blank. Now the next thing, after I put my parentheses down, you would think that I would, you know, take half of this and square it. But I can't because of that nasty little 3 there. So here's our option. We are going to pull it out by factoring. So what I end up with is this. Pull the 3 out, and that leaves me with 3x squared plus 4x plus blank, do not pull anything out of that 3. I need to pull the 3 out of these terms, but not this term right here. So be real careful of that. Now I can go ahead and complete the square, and you have to be real careful here as well, because I'm going to take half of this, which is 2, squared is 4. So I'm going to put a 4 here. But here's where you have to be super careful. Notice that this 4 actually is in the parentheses. So what I have introduced to this side of the equation is a 3 times 4. So in order to undo it, I'm going to have to subtract 12. Because I need to make sure that what is being done and undone here leads me back to my original problem. So this represents 3 times 4, which is 12. And if I subtract 12, all that's left is my original problem, which is 3x squared plus 12x minus 3. OK, so now I'm almost done. I just need to factor. And I get y equals 3. And now I've got x plus 2 quantity squared minus 15. So this one, because there's a number in front, I've got a vertical stretch. So my vertex is negative 2, negative 15. And my POC is going to be 3 times the 135, which is 3, 9, 15, because there's a stretch. OK. Um, let's maybe just do one more uh, that has a number in front so that you can, again, get another look at it. Okay, in this one, there's a negative 4 in front of that x squared term. So let's just follow the same process and see what happens. So I have an f at x instead of a y, and that's totally fine. I am going to first put in my blank. So I need to put in the plus blank, scoot the 7 over, and then put minus blank. Put in your parentheses. Now pull out the negative 4. I get negative 4, and then inside I've got an x squared. And I'll be careful, because negative 4 times what gives you a positive 24x. So I'm going to need a minus 6x plus my blank, plus 7 minus blank. All right, same process. Take half of this and square it, and I get 9. So I'm going to put a 9 here. Now ask that same question. 
what did we actually introduce to this side? I introduced a negative 36 because that's negative 4 times 9. So to offset that, I actually need to add 36. So I'm going to change this to a plus 36 because they must offset each other. This negative 36 has to be offset by another number. So now I'm just about done. I have f at x equals negative 4 factor quantity squared and then plus 43. So in this case, my vertex is 3 comma 43. My axis is x equals 3 because it has to go through here. I also know that it's upside down, which means it's reflected over the x axis. And I know that because this is minus. I also know that there's a vertical stretch because of the 4. And I could uh, also then one last thing I know from here is the POC. Because of this negative 4, I would need to take negative 4 times my normal 135, which gives me negative 4 negative 12, and negative 20 for my pattern of change. Okay, we got one more type to look at. So now let's look at writing the quadratic in factored form. So if it's already in standard form, those are the easier ones because you just need to do backwards foil and factor. So x and x. Um, minus 7 plus 5, and I'm done. And I can tell from this, if I continue to um, work with it, that my zeros are 7 and negative 5. Okay, for this other one, unfortunately, before we can factor it, we're going to have to multiply it out. So this is x squared plus 6x plus 9. And then if I write in the rest of that and multiply it out, I get y equals 2x squared plus 12x plus 18 minus 8. 2x squared plus 12x plus 10. Okay, so now I need to factor it. Now again, I you know I see these are all even, and I'd love to like just divide through by two, but notice that that causes that same problem here. I can't divide by two because this is not a zero, it's a y. So that's not gonna work. So I'm gonna take that off, and instead I'm gonna pull out a two, like I've done in other problems. I'm gonna pull out the two, that gives me x squared plus 6x plus 5. And now I can factor using backwards FOIL. And that one is x plus 5 and x plus 1. And I can tell that the zeros from this equation are negative 5 and negative 1. You don't get zeros or anything from this. This would be my stretch factor. So this would be my POC number that I would multiply by. So I could say the POC would be 2 times the 135, so 2, 6, 10. Okay, hopefully all of those examples and explanations will help you get through your day 5 worksheet. Let me know if you have questions.